this tripod adjusted a little. There we go. It's pretty good there. There's James and this thing pulled up here. Start going through these questions. All right. <clears throat> All right, guys, welcome to the front porch. Do a little Q&A here today. It's Friday, January the 10th. Got a few Patreon people to answer some questions to and uh, I'll try to get to those first. And then we'll try to go back here and grab the super chats and answer those first after that. Then I'll try to keep up with you guys and pitch some out there as well. It's hard to answer every one of these. There's just too many questions that come in on this chat window here. So real quick, uh, I had an email from a Patreon member and I cannot remember your name right now. I was trying to remember all the questions that came through. And if you're watching right now, you'll, I'm sure you'll type in there because you'll recognize your question. He's getting ready to buy an LT, uh, I don't think he even said what model. He's getting ready to buy a wood miser. He asked if the command controls were a good idea. And they're definitely a good idea if you can afford it. I think it's about a three or a $4,000 upgrade. And if you can get the command controls, which is, hello Thomas, which is standing back at the mill like I do and, and you don't have to walk beside of it. Hugh, there he is, Hugh, LT40. Get those command controls if you can afford it. And get the diesel if you can afford it. If you had to go between one or the other, the diesel or the command controls, that would be a really hard decision to make because I don't know if I'd want to give up either one of them. But get the command controls. They're really nice to have if you can afford it. Uh, as far as the width, Hugh, you asked how wide it is. I will measure that and I will get back with you. I'm actually doing a saw video today up at the mill. When I get back up there, I'll do that measurement and I'll send you a message and let you know how, how wide that thing is. It's pretty wide when that arm extends all the way out. It's pretty wide. Okay, uh, and he also asked, what's he asking that question? Uh, I think it was the, the main point to his question. Oh, the super, there he is, the super. I don't know if you're going to be a production guy and saw for people or do mobile sawing, I would probably go with the super because the hydraulics are supposedly twice as fast as mine are. You have two hydraulic pumps instead of one. And, uh, you know, uh, there's Butch, my buddy up in Mud, uh, Muddy Creek, just up the road from here. How's it going, Butch? Yell at me sometime, buddy. Uh, but as far as that goes, Hugh, if you're going to be sawing for yourself in an environment like I have, you really don't need the super unless you just want really fast hydraulics. And and also, guys, watch this chat window. My wife just uh, jumped in there, Linda. She's moderating to keep the trolls out of here. And if she knows the answer, and she knows the answers to a lot of this sawmill stuff. And uh, so if you ask a question, I can't see it or get to it right now. She will type in there and answer you guys. So, uh, what was I saying? Uh, Cody, preferred length for transporting logs, at least 18 feet. Did you text message me, Cody? Because I, I got a message the other day about that, and I tried to reply, and it said it was a bad number. But anyways, going back, Hugh, I'm going, all, I'm going all over the place here. The super or the not super, if you're doing mobile milling or sawing for people, I go with the super because you're going to be faster and time is money. If you're not going to be, hello, Mike, good to see you, buddy. If you're not going to be doing mobile saw milling and doing something like I do here and it's just on your own pace, you really don't need those fast hydraulics. I would put that money toward the remotes or a diesel engine or both. Better yet, get them both. I'd get them both if it was me. So nice to have that diesel and the remote both. If you can afford it, it's expensive. Uh, Timber Keen or Wood Miser? I have no experience with Timber Keen. I've always owned Wood Misers and that's where I'm staying. Uh, Cody, I will, I'll call you this weekend, Cody. I thought that was you, and I, I don't know why I tried to reply to that message. It wouldn't go through for some reason. I'll give you a call this weekend. All right, so real fast, going on to the Patreon people. 
Uh, Robert Evans, he's been with me since I started this channel, Robert has. Good guy. He's down in uh, Louisiana, I believe. I think he's in Louisiana or New Orleans, somewhere down in there. I missed the last chat. I'll try to catch this one. Favorite mud, to, uh, favorite mud, geez. Favorite wood to mill besides walnut, white oak. Love to quarter saw white oak. That is, I love doing that stuff. Quarter sawing white oak is a lot of fun. Really enjoy sawing up white oak. It's pretty hard stuff and it's heavy. Really fun to do. All right, I'm trying to go back and forth. This is kind of like a race here, trying to keep up with all you guys. Okay, so uh, check out the LX55, that's a good sawmill, yeah. There's Rooster, the axe junkie guy right there at the bottom. He was in the last video. Good guy right there, good to see you, Craig. I need to call you too, Craig. I meant to call you yesterday and I didn't get around to it. From Vancouver Island, it's pretty neat right there. All right, I'm going back and forth here now and look over the helicopters going over. It's nonstop around here, here lately, it seems like. Okay, James Dewey, my buddy in Ohio, he comes down here and saws with me sometimes. Can you do an artist, artistic, uh, can you do a dance for us while doing the live stream? Sorry, James, no dancing today. Lucy's over here climbing a tree. So to update everybody on the cats, Lucy is out here in the yard playing because it's warm today. It's like 65 degrees here. Tomorrow's supposed to be 74. And uh, Mama Cat's in the house. So that's where the cats are right now, just in case anybody's wondering. All right, so uh, moving on here. Going back to the live stream. All right, need to, need to block that person right there, whoever that is, John Sampson. Uh, she'll catch that in a minute, delete all those, hopefully. Let me see here. So going back to Patreon. Back on Patreon, Michael Hodge asked, uh, most common thickness you saw for the, or the most common species for your areas. The most common thickness that we do here is nine quarter because we're doing nine quarter slabs. And, uh, so we do nine quarter slabs here because that's what we're still doing here. Nine quarter slabs is what people always want. They want the live edge stuff. And uh, there's Killinger. Check out his channel. It's my buddy Killinger up in Ohio. He's done some leather work for me here recently. More about him in a later on video. We're doing a collaboration here in a few weeks. And uh, the most popular wood right here besides walnut that people saw. I need to quit swinging this porch so much. You got a loose bolt up here. I'm going to file here in a second. The most common species people will do right here is oak. This is uh, Northeast Tennessee, the Appalachian Mountains run through here. Tons of red oak here, just tons of it. You, I mean, red oak is everywhere. White oak, red oak. Red oak is the, probably the dominant species here, if I had to guess. All right, let me see here. Let me go back to the Patreon. Michael Hodge also asked, he's in North Woodsboro, North Carolina. Also, uh, what thing on the mill would you modify or change, and what is the best thing you like? The best thing I like about that sawmill is really a toss-up. I love the uh, the diesel engine. Love the Anmar diesel. I just the torque and the, the it's just you know, I keep saying enough good things about it. Love the Anmar diesel. But uh, gosh, that remote stand in the back is pro it's probably a tie between the diesel and the remotes. I love standing back there and watching everything in front of me as the sawmill travels, and you don't get as nasty. You don't have that sawdust and the bark jumping up and hitting you in the face, you know, and you're a lot cleaner at the end of the day. But uh, it's probably a toss-up to diesel and the remotes, and I would maybe lean more toward the remote, actually, because it's just, it's really nice. Uh, the other part of his question, what would you change to modify it? Well, that's interesting you ask that, because I'm getting ready to make a modification to it, and I was actually talking to Joe down at Wooden Mines in North Carolina about that this morning. And uh, the drag back feature, you see me, you saw in the videos, I'll, I'll release that bar and it brings the, uh, brings the boards back to me. 
Well, sometimes those boards go sideways. They'll side goggle to the left or the right, and I have to reach up there a lot of times and grab them. I usually edit that out sometimes because I have to move the camera because it will knock over the tripod. It's, you know, I'd say seven out of ten boards successfully get pulled back with that system, but there's two or three that go sideways, and you still have to reach up there and grab onto it and guide it back to you. So if you noticed on the LT-70 uh, sawmills or a video I've done of Robert down in uh, Georgia last year, his has these little drag back fingers that fall down. When I put that video up, people, tons of people asked about that. My buddy Jake down in Georgia at the Georgia Project every year, he has that feature also. And I think the LT-70 is the only one you can put that on. But it's these little fingers that dangle down and they guide the board back to you as it gets drugged back. And it's only offered on the 70, but you can also put that on a 40 or a 50 if you modify it just a little. And there, the modification looks like it's pretty easy. I'll probably get a welder up here to move over the arm a few inches and weld it back on. But I'm probably going to go with that in the next few weeks. I'll probably order it next week, actually. And I think it's going to be a real good modification. That's the only thing I would change about that mill is the drag bat feature. It does fine. If I had somebody off bearing, it would be perfect because they'd be standing right there catching the boards. But... I would want to, uh, I'd also want to have those fingers on there because it makes a huge difference. You know, my buddy Robert had an LT40 for years down in New Market, Alabama at Hobby Hardwoods, and he upgraded to a 70 last year, and his 40, he retroed and put those fingers on there, and he said he would not have another meal without it because it really done a good job at guiding the boards back and kept them on the mill and not hitting you in the shin. All right. So let me refresh the Patreon page here. So I think this format's going over better. I'm trying to time these to when my wife is off so she can moderate and keep a lot of the junk out of here. So uh, there's Rick Miller from across the pond. Hey, Rick. Okay, Benjamin asked, do you do, you do anything to keep logs off the ground? I do not. Is, is it a good idea to keep them off the ground long term? It sure is. Do I fool with it? I don't here. I just don't fool with it that much. I don't. I never. Have, I very rarely have something rot that's been on the ground too long. Walnut lasts on the ground for years. You guys seen this on that channel for a long time. White oak will last on the ground for a long time as well. And I really see no need in keeping the stuff off the ground in my environment here where you live. It may be a necessity, you know. But it's not hard to do. Throw some uh, cross ties on the ground, prop them up, and you're good to go. And it, they probably will last a little bit longer if they're going to be on the ground for a long time. So it is a good idea. I just don't do it here. Refresh that again. Let's see, here's Robert. There's Michael. There's Rick. There's Benjamin. Okay. All right, John Kidd. Uh, asked an interesting question right here. Very interesting question. So I'm going to answer that. Let me go check YouTube here. There's no super chats yet today. So I'm looking for those. All right. So the last Patreon question that I'm going to go through here and grab any super chat questions. And then I'll try to catch up and pit some more of these out of here as I can get to them. So, uh, the Mahinder is holding up just fine. Great tractor. So he asked, how do I measure, uh, I think, he, I think what he's wanting to know is how do I measure a crotch walnut log because of the difference in the diameter. On one end, you have the small end, could be 12 inches. Then on the other end of the log, it flares out on the crotch. It could be 40 or 50 inches or it could be 30 inches. You know, there's a huge difference there. And you've seen that on this channel, guys. A huge difference there on the size of those things. And uh, so the way I measure that is I go to that small end. If it's 12 inches, I'll take a measurement. I'll go halfway up and do another measurement. If it's a four foot log, you know, two feet, eight foot log, four feet, you know, what have you. I go to the very end on the crotch. I'll do a last measurement there. And I don't measure across the end grain. I measure across the top of the log and try to get a decent eyeball there. I'm pretty close on the crotch width. I then take that same measurement, add it together, divide by three, and that's how many board feet that I figured up. And that's the same way most of your sawmills figure up the board feet in larvae la, and uh, larvae edge and live edge slabs when they sell them. We'll take three measurements because of varying widths, 
and they'll average those and there's your board footage. So that's a good, good way to do it. That's probably the best way to do it. Is that the only way to do it? Probably not. Is there a better way out there? I don't think so. Does that, that really make sense to me because you're just getting a good average of all three measurements from the widest to the middle to the lowest. And it's pretty fair at the very end of it, you know, it would be impossible to take a measurement to get a, you know, an exact, like precise board footage amount. So, uh, you know, and that way comes out pretty good. It's fair for the salary and it's fair for the customer. I've never had nobody complain about measuring that way. And that's the same way uh, when you scale out a walnut log, it's the same way that we buy them as well. We, as, as you figure out the board footage, I do the same thing. Okay. Let me go through here, see if there's any supers in here first. I'm trying to keep up with everything. I think that's the last Patreon question. And uh, if you guys want your questions moved to the front of the line, you can go join Patreon and it's a uh, Gosh, it's like a uh, little paid site. You can give a dollar a month or five dollars a month, and you, you, know, you get front of the line stuff. And you also get you're able to contact me directly and uh, ask you some related questions you need answered, and I'll try to answer them. If I can't answer them, I got buddies down in Georgia who solved a lot longer than I am. They'll have the answers for us. Okay, so go through here. Try to grab a few of these. So, uh, find one here. Okay, uh, Craig Roost asked, uh, let me see. I, there's James putting a super chat in. Here's some extra cat food for mama. That's awesome. I appreciate that. She's in the house right now, actually, with my wife. She's not out here with us today, but Lucy's out here somewhere in one of these trees, but Mama Cat's in the house. So we appreciate that, buddy. Okay, uh, so at Junkies Craig asked what size frame. We're doing a 16 by 30. The concrete pad is 30 by 30, so I'm going to do a lean-to on one side of it for implements. But the main uh, source, the main use for this building is for the big tractor and the New Holland tractor and the Cub Cadet mower and all my attachments for the tractor. And to get my feet wet into a timber framing because eventually in a few years I want to make a much larger building for the sawmill one day. I'd like to do a timber frame on that as well. And that would just, you know, give me some experience here and get going. Hello, Graham. There's my buddy in the UK, Graham. He always watches all my videos. Comments on every one of them. Good to see you there, buddy. I'm not sure what time it is how it is over there, but I appreciate you watching. And uh, thanks again to James for the super chat. That's awesome. We appreciate that. Okay, it's 23 after. These things, these things fly by. They fly by. There's another one. Appreciate that. There's Wesley. Finally made it. He's a big fan of Mama Cat there. He always asked about her in the videos. She's not been in the video lately. I need to maybe show her in the next one, maybe. Let me see here. Try to grab some more uh, questions here. I'm having trouble loading here on the on the iPad. Okay, so it's five thirty over where Graham is. Okay. Let me see. He wants this. Okay, uh, limbs for woodworking. Hmm, I don't know about that. Limbs have a lot of stress in them. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the limb. I don't know if I would even fool with it because it's not very stable. If I'm going to take a limb and put it on the sawmill, it needs to be a large limb of 20 inch diameter or more that I easily cut a beam or a mantle and I forget about it for several years, and I just hope that it dries and doesn't flip or flop or twist on you too bad, but it's, it's usually not a good idea. Limb has, a limb has so much tension in it, it's a lot more dense than the regular part of the tree, and all that stress is built up from the wind, it's just gonna move a whole lot. You know, it's, you're, you're better off with firewood and stuff like that, and I would not even use that in the shop for anything. Okay, good evening from England. Hello from South Carolina. Another update here, February the 1st, 
which is a Saturday. I'm going to be at the Woodmiser location in North Carolina, and it's Joe's place down there. It's right outside of Charlotte, and they're having an open house there on that Saturday from 8 a.m. until who knows when. I guess when the last person heads out the door. But I'll be I'll be uh, I'll be attending that event. I talked to Joe about that this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come on down for that. So if you're close to Charlotte. Put it on your calendar, February the 1st, a Saturday from 8 a.m. till maybe 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock. Come by and we'll shake hands and talk about sawmill, and you can watch Joe run all those meals. He'll have all kinds of meals on display down there. Should be for a good time. There's Keith. There's Andrew from England. A lot of people in England getting on here. There's from Poland. There's a Tim, retired with wood. He's talking about that LX250 slabber. If you're interested in seeing a slabber, uh, Tim was on Instagram at retired with wood. He puts up a lot of uh, little clips of his LX250 slabbing out some really nice black walnuts. So go over to Instagram and check him out if you want to see something like that going on or get some more information about it. I've not seen one up close. Actually, I have seen one up close. Last year in Indianapolis, I saw one. There's Peter down in Sydney, Australia. Hope things are improving down there with all the fires we've been seeing on the television. It's just a mess down there. I hate to see that. I'm sure that a lot of good timber would get ruined that way. Have you ever seen Matt Cremona's huge sawmill? Any thoughts on that? I've seen it on a video. I've never seen it in person, so I don't know the, really the logistics of it or how easy it is to run. So I really don't know much about it. I've talked to Matt a few times, but I don't know anything about his meal other than it's it's a pretty good sized meal, but it looks like there's a lot of manual features to it that I wouldn't want to fool with. I I don't know. It looks like a good meal. He built it, so uh, it looks like he knows what he's doing. looks okay. Peter James. Uh, been raining here in Missouri. Three to four inches. It rained here the past few days. We had puddles in the front field here. In the log yard, we had standing water. It was just a mess. A mess when it rains. When it rains here, it just, gosh, it rains forever. Uh, Wesley, only trees are here are a few pecan. I have a pecan log across town. I need to go get it. I've been meaning to go get that for a while now. Pecan is some hard stuff. It's out of the hickory family. Really hard to saw. Uh, there's Jack getting a lot of rain. Now it's snow. It's glad it's not snow. I would prefer snow here over the rain myself. Rain just makes a mess. Man, it makes a mess here. There's Hugh from Roanoke. Uh, T-shirts. I'll tell you what, we'll do another T-shirt order between now and spring. I I, I'm not sure when. We'll, I'll try to do another one, though. I had a few people email me recently. I'll let you guys know on the channel when we do that. We usually do a pre-order, then we send them out, and usually about three or four weeks, and we send them in the mail to you. We'll do another one. I may do some hats as well. Some people's been asking about the hats, so we'll not do both. There's Frank. Uh, how are you marketing your work? Are you selling Live Edge Slabs retail? Go over to Patreon, Frank, and sign up for all that information, buddy. Now, that's not a sales pitch, but uh, that's the kind of stuff on Patreon we talk about is the business of sawmilling. I know we talk about so much on this channel here, and the, most of these questions are just about the mill and sawing up wood. So if you're really interested in, this, in the specifics of saw milling and how you can market your stuff you can join patreon it's like you can give a dollar a month you know so uh go check that out it's in, there's a link in all my videos a hoodie or a tank top i'm not we've not done a hoodie before or a tank top we may try it though uh on your tables do you rub in i do i do on the last table that we done that little walnut table I put wax on at the very end. That's the last thing I put on it was the wax. And I buffed that in as well with the buffer. There's the poor man seeing good afternoon. <laughs> Teed that up for you. Well, I'm just trying to, trying to uh, pull people in the right direction. There's Andy. I'm only seeing five dollars option. You can you can change that to a dollar. I have probably 50 or 60 people that do the dollar tier over there. You just have to log on there and uh, there's a place to do a dollar on there. Which if you're interested in sawmill and that's a very very small price to pay 
for the information that I have or the information I can get for you from other sawyers. So, uh, and that's the reason I do that. It just takes so much time on here to talk about elaborate questions like that. A lot of people don't want to hear about stuff like that that are even, most people watch this channel to run saw mills. They just enjoy watching what we do here. So it's just a good platform for other people to have discussions on stuff like that. All right, so. Go back through here and uh, check some stuff out. Okay, I'm all, uh, Jeff asked, did you ever imagine you'd hit 70,000 subscribers? I actually thought it would happen. I didn't know when, but I, I thought the videos were pretty good and people were interested in this line of work and I thought I would get there eventually. I just didn't know when. And, uh, but I'm pretty happy with getting there. I'm about 400 subscribers away from 70,000, something around there, about 400. So I'm just about there. That's a pretty good number. My overall goal is uh, 100,000. That would be a really nice number to have. I would, I would feel pretty content with the channel if I could ever get to 100,000. And we'll get there. It may take another year, but we'll get there. Hopefully sooner than that, though. Okay. Uh, are, you planning to stay, are you planning to expand your business? Not at this time right now. No, I'm pretty happy with the growth that we have and what we do here. Okay, let's see, there's Peter talking about the, the fires, lots of timber going up in flames. Bad, I've seen some terrible pictures of uh, koala bears and stuff, just horrible stuff, terrible. Have you ever used an Alaskan mill? I've never used one, but I have one. I have an MS-880, which is that giant steel chainsaw and a six foot bar and the whole Grand Bird rail system that goes with it. I need to get that out of the box. It's been in the box for two and a half years. I need to get that out and actually saw a log one day with it. Never done that yet, but I know guys that do it, and a lot of people do it for a living, actually. There's a guy across town. That's all he's ever had in the last in mill, and he does really fine with it. What's your, uh, what's your favorite type of finish? That Odie's oil that I used on the last table Really nice stuff. It doesn't stink in two or three days. It's, uh, there's Andy. He just joined Patreon. They got email right there. That's awesome. Thanks, Andy. You can get all kinds of information over there, guy. Feel free to message me whenever you want to. And if you have a lot of questions, I'll probably just call you. It's a lot easier sometimes just to call people over there. So, uh, what was I talking about? I remember what I was talking about. Odie's oil, types of finish. So Odie's oil has worked out great, but it is expensive, but it's pretty good stuff. And there's Tim talking. I think Tim's been using some Odie's oil also over at Retired of Wood. If you're coming on late in the, in the uh, video here, February 1st, Wood Miser, North Carolina, 8 a.m., open house. I'll be there with Joe and all the Wood Miser guys. So check it out. It's outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, February the 1st. Okay. James talks about that ash. Actually, James, when I get this pine finished up, I'm going to put that ash on the sawmill the first of the week and cut up every bit of it because I need that area freed up, and that's about a 1,000 feet right there. I'm going to saw it all up and probably take me two days, but I will be doing a video on all that ash over there. Most of it will be for tool handles, actually. It'll be some good stuff. All the best from Denmark. Uh logs with burls on them i do not i cut a burl off a maple tree a few years ago but i just i actually sold the entire burl to a, a woodworker for bowl turning i didn't even saw it any finishes you don't like i don't like polyurethane I hate that stuff it feels like plastic it stinks you can't you can't feel the wood you know you can tell there's a huge barrier between you and the timber i do not like polyurethane don't like it I really like water lots, but water lots it just man, it stinks up the whole shop and takes forever to cure. Let me see here. Any, let me see here. Poly is plastic. You're exactly right about that. I 
I'll check on that, Andy, on the custom Patreon thing. I'll, I'll go in there and make a $1 tier. That might make it a lot simpler for people. So I will do that today. I'll make it where you just do a dollar over there. So, uh, okay. Let me go back through here. What time is it? 12.35. I got to get back on the meal here in a little bit. Sawing up white pine and, uh, no, it's all white. White pine today. Let me see here. No more super chats, okay? I try to keep up with these super chats and answer you guys' questions as well. Appreciate you guys doing that. It helps us out here, especially on these live videos. Really appreciate you guys doing that. All right. Don't see anything else coming through. There's a little bit of a delay here between this iPad and me talking to my phone. There's a Craig, or you have a barn raised. I'm actually Craig, I'm having my tie beans cut right now. I'm having eight, uh, 16 foot white pine tie beans cut at a mill just up from about 30 minutes up the road. And when they're cut, I'm gonna stand up half the frame and that'll probably be me and my dad. So uh, I'm gonna probably raise it in two different stages. Not really a, a traditional raising that you see, but uh, about as good as we can do here. Cause I want to video the process and I'll probably do it in stages so we can properly document it via YouTube here so you guys can see it also. Okay, ever use epoxy? Yes, uh, West Coast Systems epoxy. Love that stuff. Okay, there's Andy. Uh, we address stuff like that on Patreon as far as the selling the lumber and stuff goes. I'll see you over there and we'll talk about that. What's your favorite food? Italian. Love Italian. I could eat pizza every day. I love Italian. I like Mexican pretty good too, but uh, I love Italian food. Do you ever hear music or ear protection while sawing? I do not. I wear uh, or the goggles or the earmuffs rather. Goggles are over your eyes. But I don't listen to any music. I like to hear is uh, what's that say? I like to hear the mill running. Is it, the, the mill's gonna tell you so much while it's running. It's gonna tell you how the blade's cutting. It's gonna tell you if you hit metal. You're gonna hear if it bods down, so you need to slow down your feed just a little. You need to listen to that sawmill. If, you, if, you're, if you're running a sawmill and you're listening to music, then uh, I would advise against that. I think you really gotta concentrate on that mill. Hello from Germany, that's awesome. Guys are, it's always amazing for you guys in Germany and New Zealand and Australia, you guys across the oceans that are watching us over here. It just amazes me. You guys, uh, other parts of the world are actually watching what we do here. It's just awesome. Pizza is technically Chinese. Well, it could be. I don't care what it is. If it's Italian or Chinese, love that stuff. Good stuff. That's my favorite food. Let me see here. Any good barbecue here? There is very good barbecue here. We have one really good place and one other place that everybody thinks is the greatest place in the world that's really not. But uh, the other place is kind of a lot smaller. It's a lot better. Okay. Pizza is not China. That's, let's not get in the argument here over pizza. Let's just all agree that it's pizza. How's that? James Broad Street. That's what he's talking Broad Street barbecue. Delicious stuff. He must have went to, uh, yeah, he did. He went and ate there after we sawed that day. He was here on, uh, around the 1st of December, I think, was when he was down. Pledge. I guess you guys, you guys have conversations amongst the chat here. I guess you're talking about cleaning wood and stuff like that. Anything with silicone is terrible to put on furniture. So, uh. Uh, the name of that place, or you, if you're referring to the barbecue place, it's called Broad Street Barbecue. It's the best. There's another place called Ridgewood that people are like just crazy about. That's not nowhere near as good. All right. So, go back to. Patreon again. Make sure nobody's jumped in there to ask anything. No. 
I don't think I've called all those questions and answered those. Uh, let me see. Here comes the cat. She may jump up here. Well, it's kind of slowing down. How, uh, Oliver asked how satisfied I am with the sawmill. Extremely satisfied. No complaints at all about that meal. Uh, no complaints about the LT35 either I used to run. It was, uh, don't rub on, don't rub on the tripod. That's the thing about these cats. They rub on these tripods. They love to rub on them. Mom and cat's knocked over the tripod many a times. It's not Lucy's going to do the same thing. I cut any more apple. Very interesting that you asked about apple. The guy that brought me that apple, and that was a limb, he said. And uh, he sent me an email the other day. Okay. He sent me an email just the other day about another apple tree, and I can't believe it's that large. It's about 30 minutes from here. He's going to be cutting it out of somebody's backyard, and it's, it's the biggest apple tree I've ever seen. It may be the biggest one there is maybe i don't know it's, it's just ridiculous how big the apple tree is going by the pictures it, you know it's, it's it's looking like this on diameter on, on breast height you know that high that tall or that wide rather so he's supposed to be cutting that down and bringing it over to saw so that's gonna be really interesting to see if it's that big so uh just amazing hopefully we get that apple here in the next few weeks he's got to rent a lift to remove it because it's right beside of a house Okay, uh, ever cut uh, any guitar grade alder? I have not. Uh, John asks, what soda do you drink? I am a Pepsi guy. I drink way, don't get away from that, get away. Cat's rubbing on the tripod again. I drink way too many soft drinks. I'm a big Pepsi guy. That and sweet tea, love sweet tea. Uh, cedar, yes, I, cut, I used to cut cedar all the time. Back to about 2012 and 13, I cut cedar sometimes year round for people. Uh, Pepsi, not Coke, that's a scene. I'll drink Coke too. I'm not really picky about it. Whichever. But it tastes the same to me. But uh, as far as cedar goes, I got a bunch of large cedar timber in one of these piles back here I got from my buddy Doyle over in Midway, Virginia, about 20, 25 minutes away. And those are some really large cedars. I'll probably slab them out. I need to get those on the mill sooner than later. That's something else I need to get on the mill is that cedar. Any wood you will not cut on the saw mill? Uh, I'm not a fan of saw and hickory, but I will saw it. And I have some here to cut pretty soon, but I'm not a fan of hickory. It's just so dense. It's hard on the mill. But that diesel may be a different story. The 35 had a hard time with it. Okay, uh, what's your favorite beer? Don't have a favorite beer. I don't drink alcohol. So uh, I guess a negative on that. I, I've never been an alcohol drinker. I just, not my forte, I guess. I'm not big on stuff like that. The hardest wood I ever saw was an old barn beam. of It was a locust that my buddy Tommy brought me to resaw. It was an old locust barn beam, black locust, which is extremely hard. Probably been in a barn for a hundred years. And it was extremely dense. That was some hard stuff right there. Uh, no sugar, grains, red meat. Now, a lot of red meat here. I love red meat. I'll fail on that one. Okay, there's Rick. I appreciate that. Uh, most interesting thing we ever found inside of a log was not very interesting. Just nails. I've never hit nothing besides nails in law. I think I think I hit a butt shot one time. Looked like a piece of lead. I'm not sure if it was or not, but that's really about it. I've seen people hit horseshoes, or seen people in pictures and hit logging chains and stuff like that, but nails is about the only thing I've ever hit. Okay, here's Benjamin doing some shad bark hickory. That's some hard stuff. You're exactly right, that's some hard stuff. Uh, do you ever use the slabs cut from your own, uh, or do you cut the sail? Almost everything we saw up here slab-wise we sell. Actually, every bit of it we do. I keep a few for little 
small projects here that sometimes amount to nothing, but most of them are sold. You just can't keep them all. I'd love to keep them all. I love the walnuts and the maples, but you gotta have space. You gotta have a turnaround, so you just can't keep them all, but almost all of them get sold. Uh, I'm get timber cut for a wagon project for the longitudinals. I don't know what that part is, uh, but I would go ahead and tell you, I would probably do oh, uh, the locust if it's going to be part of a wagon, because red oak out in the weather does not fare very well at all, especially with no cover over it. Red oak will rot on you eventually. It's not like white oak. White oak will last a long time. If you're, if you're dead set on oak, do white oak. It lasts a long time. Red oak will rot. Uh, you're right, James. I made fence posts out of locust. I have a few corner posts here that are actually out of locust. Let me see here. Uh, any guidance on drying time for standing deadwoods, uh, specifically spotted maple? I don't know. I've never dealt with that. I've never had any situations where a tree's been dead standing and I was kind of basing the moisture content off a of harvest date. I'm not sure. You know, most time on a maple, I'll cut it down then that's when the spotting starts and I'll let it sit for a year or two, depending upon what it's looking like on the end grain. That, that'd probably be a really good question for a forester. They would probably answer that pretty fast for you. I got a buddy, it's a forester down in Georgia. He's retired actually, and I hit him up on stuff like that all the time. Those guys are just a wealth of knowledge for stuff. I'm sure you asked that, how do you get most of your wood? Uh, most of the time now we buy it from loggers. That's how we get most of our wood here. There's slave. We're talking about getting the moisture content. Uh, go out and get yourself a good moisture meter, either Delmhurst or a Wagner. Delmhurst is the best one to have. How many times can you resharpen before it's done? About five sharpenings and you're pushing that blade and it will start to break on you. The new 747s, they say three sharpenings is all you'll probably get out of those. But about five sharpenings on the most common blade. If it's 45 thickness, 55 thickness is a lot less. That's what I'm running now is the 55s. Because they're thicker, but they, they saw a lot flatter. They saw better. What's the most successful log you've ever milled? Uh, black walnut. Every time. I'd always be black walled on that. All right. So, caught up on those. Get off the Patreon there and close that out. I closed out the YouTube as well. There's Les from Texas, new subscriber, appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Chuck, if you're asking about Patreon, in every one of my videos, there's a link down below to it. You can follow that link and go right to it. It'll take you just a few seconds to do that. There's Robert, I answered your question about 20 minutes ago, Robert. You're a little bit late getting here, buddy. There's Killinger listening while he drives. He's he's on his way to I bet he's on his way to work. I think he worked second shift. I'm not sure on that though. Check out uh, Killinger's channel. He's over on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in the word Killinger, and he's probably the only channel that's going to come up with that unique last name of his. He's doing a lot of videos on axes and chainsaws right now on a little homestead that he just bought up in Ohio. Got some pretty good stuff. All right. Now, Killinger, if you're driving, how are you responding right here, buddy? I hope you're not typing into your phone while you're driving. So, uh, let me see here. Okay, uh, Charles, that's, uh, that's, that's questions we answer on Patreon there, Charles, about the financial parts of this 
career right here that I'm in. If you want to know stuff like that, then head on over to there. It's just, it's just a whole other long conversation right there to get into. I can't answer stuff like that with just uh, a sentence or two. Oh, Killinger's in traffic, so we'll have to look over him right there. He's in traffic, he says. All right, so, uh, yes, it's almost one o'clock. Get ready to call it done here in just a minute. I gotta get back on the meal, enjoy this nice weather, and get some sawing done. Doing some uh, eight foot white pine today. Gotta to finish up uh, loading up the kiln. Got some really nice white pine to put on the meal. How about an eight hour compilation of sawn woods? If it wouldn't take so long to pull all that footage and edit it, I'm, I would probably look into that. It would take God, eight hours of footage, would take forever to upload. Let me see here. Uh, how you like your new acts? Really good acts. I liked it a lot. I've used it twice since the video the other day, and it's held up the edge really well. It's a really good act. It really feels good in the hand. It's a good weight, that two pound head. Really like it. Uh, how much do you pay for a walnut log on average? Patreon, there you go, there's your answer, buddy. Head on over to there and you can find out what I paid for every log that you see in these videos. I put all that stuff on there. That's a little, in that's a little incentive for you guys to go over there and uh, kind of helps me out, and gives me something back for my time that I put into putting those posts up on there. Okay, uh, new subscriber, love the woods. Appreciate that. So, uh, not a lot of views today on this thing here. Uh, 176. I need to. The last time we had more people watching, but it was around Christmas. Uh, do you do you do a live stream on Patreon? I'm going to start doing that because I just now figured out how to do a live stream over there. So I'm going to start doing that on Patreon just as well. Cause up until the, just the other day, I couldn't figure it out, but I emailed them, and they told me how to do it. Uh, have you ever cut any burls? I have not. I don't have any experience with burls. I sawed one off a tree one time that was getting taken down, and I sold it to a bowl turner. I didn't even saw into it. Uh, there's Rob. What killed your last night? Heard him mention uh, Buck and Billy Ray. Yep, him and Buck are pretty good fa uh, friends, it looks like. Let me see. He's a... Uh, Really like old Buckins videos. He does a good job over there. There's James. Wood Whisperer does a live stream at this same time. That may make sense. He's a lot more uh, bigger following than I have. Some of my viewers may be watching Mark over there any, rather than watch us. Mark needs to change the time he does his live streams, I reckon, then. He needs to do it either early or after I get done. I'll have to send him a note. All right, so appreciate everybody watching. I'm going to go ahead and probably call it quits here. It's about 1 o'clock. And uh, February 1st, Charlotte Woodmiser location. It's outside of Charlotte. If you ask Google, they'll give you the exact directions on how to get there. We'll be there for the Woodmiser open house. It's on a Saturday. starts at 8 a.m. and probably go to 12 or 1 or 2 o'clock, I guess. Not been to one. I've done one in Atlanta last year. If that would mind, I've never been to an open house in Carolina, so it'd be a little bit different experience. Uh, the blue and blue in the pine is from fungus usually, and from uh, drying too fast on the pine. So there's my buddy Graham and my buddy Smithy. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one done. Appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate the super chats. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next video, probably probably tomorrow. I'm videoing today, and I'll probably edit tonight and push it out tomorrow. And do a lot of sawing this week, uh, this week also. Thanks for watching, guys.